Hey, I'm Alex Joyner. I'm pastor at First United Methodist Church in Charlottesville, Virginia, here with the midweek update for Wednesday, May the 18th, 2022. I've been kind of obsessed with this little sign here on the um, pole. It's uh, got the words, your compassion on it. And I wonder what used to be below that sign. Is it like one of those tear off sheets with all the numbers where you, once you take them, they're all gone? Is our compassion all gone? I don't know. I do know that we need a lot of it these days. I'm here on Monday night and this is Market Street Park and there is another vigil prepared for tonight. The Black Youth Action Committee is sponsoring a vigil to remember those who were the victims of the shootings in Buffalo, New York, but it's more than that. Uh, it could have been a number of other hate crimes throughout the country. It could have been the church in California it could have been and is a rally to remember how racism is still so embedded within us and in the in our in our society that it is hard to uh, eradicate so we're praying tonight uh, and here to bear witness to a hope for a different future where do we go from here on saturday 10 people lost their lives and three people were injured because of white supremacist shooters targeted a supermarket in a predominantly black, black community. Charlottesville Black Youth Action Committee invites our whole community to show solidarity solidarity with Buffalo, New York, and, the, and with black communities everywhere. We will come together tonight, Monday, May 16th at 8 p.m. In, in the Market Street Park to hold space for a collective morning to honor the people who lost their lives. Well, now it's a little bit later in the evening. I've just come from the park where we finished the vigil. The organizers were uh, young women who uh, have called us out about the ways that we have and haven't shown up to help make this nation a different place. It strikes me that 20 years ago, a rally like that would probably have been organized by churches. And it is my faith that brought me into questions like this but also recognize that churches have not always been the best witness. So I feel challenged tonight and feel a call to be open and to be active in changing things. You might notice the steeple behind me is green. Uh, and just if you come by this week, you will, you'll see the change. It's Mental Health Awareness Month. And this week, a number of buildings in Charlottesville have cha changed their in outdoor lighting at night to green. So we've done the same here to recognize all those who uh, love people who struggle with mental health and who uh, struggle on their own. So um, grateful for that. So I hope you'll join us this weekend at services on Sunday morning. We're going to be celebrating the ministry of Deborah Lewis. Deborah followed me as the director of the Wesley Foundation at the University of Virginia and has been uh, in that campus ministry position for 17 years as director. And she was assistant uh, with me there for a few years before that. So uh, Deborah is a wonderful, gifted uh, pastor. And as she moves on from Charlottesville to take a new role, uh, we wanted to recognize all that she's done and to recognize the continuing connection between our church and the campus ministry at UVA. You know, it started right here at First Church in the Fellowship Hall right here. So uh, we've got a long connection. Finally, uh, I've got a few minutes uh, after this with an interview of an interview that I did with Mike Mather. Uh, as a staff, we've been reading a book of his about asset-based community development and how churches can use that to get reconnected to their community. Uh, it, he's a very engaging speaker. You'll see the YouTube link if you want to follow and see the whole discussion. Uh, but I hope you'll stick around and at least get a, a peek at the, the teaser that's at the end of this uh, midweek update. Thanks and look forward to seeing you whenever I see you. God bless you. I'll see you soon. In terms of understanding about community development is I think that I had thought what I was doing in the neighborhood was community development. And I think what I was really doing was running a volunteer program for people in our church. Mm. Right. Yeah. I mean, and that's all that funders wanted to know too. The people who funded our summer program or our tutoring program or anything, all they ever asked us was, you know, 
Um, how many volunteers do you have? How many young people? How many contact hours? You know, they never said, did anything actually get better? Mm. Right. How many pounds of food did you distribute? Mm. Nobody said, you know, anything about, did this actually help? Every year we ran the tutoring program in that neighborhood. Every year, and it was decades, every year we ran it, the graduation rate in our neighborhood got worse. Wow. It did not get worse because of what we were doing. But I never looked at it till years later because that wasn't what it was about. It wasn't about, is it helping? It was about, are we matching young people and tutors together? Yeah, and you tell, I don't know if this is the same community, but you tell a story in the in the book about... Um, going to find somebody who was doing tutoring already just That's through the right. way that she lived her life. So and that was when I came back to the church in Indianapolis Yeah, and we had got, to, we would get tutors from Broadway and from um, suburban churches, Meridian street, United Methodist church, St. Luke's United Methodist church, Carmel United Methodist church. We would get tutors from United way. We would get tutors from um, Lily pharmaceutical. But we never asked for tutors from the neighborhood, mm. right? Because we, because I was only seeing these people for their need, right? Was, and when we hired a young man who was in our congregation and who lived in the neighborhood named Diamond Harges, to to go find the gifts and talents of people in the community, he called me one time and said, "Mike, you've got to meet Maya." And I said, "Well, who's Maya?" And he said, "Well, you've got to meet her." And I said, "Why?" And he says, "She runs tutoring out of her house." And not I said, for, not as a career. She was just doing no, this as, no. as yeah. Yes. yeah, as a neighbor. Yeah, and I'm like, what? What do you mean? He said, "Well, you got to call her." So I call her, and you know, she's lived in that neighborhood her whole life. She's in her early 30s. She lives in the house her parents raised her in. She works for AT and T at night, and when she gets up during the summer, about 11 o'clock in the morning the young people from her block come over and she tutors them. And I say, well, what do you cover? And she says, I cover everything from phonics to Sophocles. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? She said, well, if they don't know how to read, we do phonics. If they do know how to read, we do Sophocles. Wow. And then at the end of the week, I do a barbecue in my backyard on Friday night and their families come over and we present what they've learned that week. Now, I should not be, you know, what came to me was, my God, I shouldn't be saying to her, you know, hey, come tutor in our program. I should be saying, how can we support and encourage and bless this good, holy work that you are doing in your life? Right. So. 